So now I'm going to explain why the diagonalization formula is so useful. So in this video, I'm going to keep using the same example we did in the previous one. So I've written out here the matrix A and the matrices P lambda P minus 1, which diagonalize it. So we checked last time A is P lambda P minus 1. So I'm going to give a few examples of what you can do with this formula. So the first is you can calculate a to a certain power. So let's try and calculate a to the power 10. Now that's going to be a lot of work if you write out the matrix A 10 times and then multiply each matrix together. Right? That's a lot of work. So we don't want to do it that way. We want to find a, a better way. And the diagonalization formula gives you this better way because as follows. Right? So suppose I want to calculate A squared to start with to show you how it works. Well, using the diagonalization formula, this is p lambda p minus 1 times p lambda p minus 1. But here, the p and p minus 1 in the middle cancel, the inverse matrices. And lambda times lambda just gives you lambda squared. So this is p times lambda squared p minus 1. Okay. Similarly, a cubed. This is then a squared, which is p lambda squared p minus 1 times p lambda p minus 1. Again, the p's in the middle cancel. So this is p lambda cubed p minus 1. And hopefully you see the pattern now. a to the power 10 is going to be p times lambda to the power 10 times p minus 1. OK? So well, you've just replaced one power of 10 by another, but the reason that this is useful is it's very easy to calculate the powers of a diagonal matrix, as you can see here. Lambda squared, that's minus 2, 0, 0, 1, times minus 2, 0, 0, 1. You just multiply this one by itself, so that's minus 2 squared. And then you multiply this one by itself, so it's 1 squared here, and then zeros everywhere else. So in other words, to square the matrix, you just square each of its elements here. And the same is true in general. So lambda cubed is going to be minus 2 cubed, 0, 0, 1 cubed. And the same here, lambda to the power 10 is going to be minus 2 to the power 10, 0, 0, 1 to the power 10. Okay. So minus 2 to the power 10 is the same as 2 to the power 10. And 1 is 1. Okay. okay, so that's for this particular example. In general, I better just give the general case, I think. If you've got lambda in general, this is lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda n. Okay, and then zero is everywhere else. Then lambda to the power n the matrix is going to be take, sorry, m, because it's not the same as the dimension, is going to be the power to the m of each eigenvalue separately. So lambda 1 to the m, lambda 2 to the m, and lambda n to the m, and 0 is everywhere else. So in general, it's easy to calculate the power of this diagonal matrix. Right. So once we've done this bit of theory, it's now very easy to calculate a to the power 10, or indeed a to any power. Okay, so a to the power 10, this is p times lambda to the 10 times p minus 1. So I'll take, use these matrices here. p is 1, 1, minus 1, 2. Lambda to the power 10, that's 2 to the power 10, 0, 0, 1. And p minus 1, that's 2 minus 1, 1, 1. So that's a third, 1 minus 1, 1, 2. Here you get 2 times 2 to the 10, so that's 2 to the 11. And minus 2 to the 10, and 1, 1. Which is a third. So 2 to the 11 plus 1. Minus 2 to the 10 plus 1 minus 2 to the 11 plus 2, 2 to the 10 plus 2. Okay, And now 
that's quite easy to work out on a calculator now. And if you do that, then you get this is 683 minus 341 minus 682, 342. Okay. So you see, we got the answer a to the 10 in one, two, three, four, five steps. Okay. And that's much easier than it would have been if you wrote out the matrix A 10 times and had to multiply all of these 10 matrices together. Right? And if I go to the power 20 or 50 or a million, then the power of this method becomes very clear. Okay. So that's one use of the diagonalization formula to calculate powers of matrices. But it can do much more than that. So here's another similar example but maybe a bit more interesting. Suppose I ask you to calculate what is the square root of the matrix. In other words, what is a to the half? So this idea of square root of a matrix is new, but it's defined in exactly the same way as the square root of a number. In other words, we say that the matrix B is the square root of the matrix A if the square of B is equal to the matrix A. So what we really want to do is find a matrix such that if we square it, we will get the matrix A. Okay. And again, with the diagonalization formula, this is very easy because A to the half, by the same logic on the previous page, is just equal to P times lambda to the half times P minus one. So you have to find a matrix lambda to the half which if you square gives you lambda, but that's easy because lambda to the power half, again, you can just do it to each, well, okay, let me do the general case first, each eigenvalue separately. So it's lambda one to the half, lambda two to the half, up to lambda n to the half, series everywhere else. Okay, so in our case, this is minus two to the half, one to the half, 0, 0. So now, in general, you have more than one choice. So here you have four choices, because you can take plus or minus here, plus or minus there. So the 2 by 2 matrix A has four square roots. Now I'll choose the square root, which is square root of 2 times I here, and just 1 there. So that's one choice. So now we can calculate what this is. So P was 1, 1, minus 1, 2. Lambda to the half was square root of 2i, 0, 0, 1. P minus 1 was 2 minus 1, 1, 1. OK, and if you multiply all of those out, OK, I won't do it to save time. The answer you get is a third, 1 plus 2 square root 2i. 1 minus square root 2i, 2 minus 2 square root 2i, 2 plus square root 2i. Okay. So that's a matrix you can check. I won't because it's you know more trouble than it's worth. But you can check that this a to the half times a to the half is equal to a. So if you square this matrix, you get back the matrix a. It does work. And note also, in general, the square root of a real matrix will be complex if it has negative eigenvalues. So we can calculate the square roots of matrices in this way too. Okay. We can also calculate the exponential of a matrix okay. using the same idea. <clears throat> so first we have to define what is meant by the exponential of a matrix. And you define it in the same way as we define the exponential of a complex number. In other words, we define it using the Taylor series for e to the x. So the Taylor series to e to the x is 1 plus x plus so on. So here 1 is replaced by the identity. But everything else is the same. So it's 1 plus a plus a squared over 2 factorial plus a cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. So we can write this down as the sum n goes from 0 to infinity, a to the n over n factorial, where we've used the notation a to the power 0 as the identity matrix.
So we can define it this way, but obviously if you try and calculate this just by multiplying a together, you're going to have a tough time, right? Because a to the n is in general hard to calculate. But if we use the diagonalization formula, it becomes much easier because i is equal to p times p minus 1, a is p times lambda times p minus 1, a squared is p times lambda squared times p minus 1 over 2 factorial, and so on. And you can see you can take p out on the left, and you can take p minus 1 out on the right. And what you've got in the middle is just the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of lambda to the n over n factorial. Okay. But this is p times the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial times lambda 1 to the n. Okay, sorry. So this is the problem using n for the size of the matrix and for the sum. So I'll take an m by n matrix. This is lambda 2 to the n, lambda m to the n. So here is everywhere else. So you can see that this sum is just going to give you the exponential of lambda 1 here, the exponential of lambda 2 there, the exponential of lambda m there. So this is equal to p, sorry, I've run out of space, let me go over here. This is equal to p times the matrix e to the lambda 1, e to the lambda 2, e to the lambda m, with zeros everywhere else, times the matrix p to the minus 1. Okay, so there you have a nice formula which enables you to calculate the exponential of a matrix in a reasonable amount of time. Okay. So we'll use this formula now in our example to see what the exponential of A is. Okay. So I'm going to do a slightly different example, so this paper is not very clean. So to make it a bit more interesting and a bit more useful, I'm, instead of calculating e to the a, I'm going to calculate e to the a times a constant t. Okay. So this constant doesn't change much. It just means this is equal to p times e to the lambda t times p minus 1. So this means p times e to the lambda 1 t, e to the lambda 2 t, e to the lambda m t. Zero is everywhere else, p minus 1. So in our example, then, this will give you a third 1, 1, minus 1, 2, e to the minus 2t, 0, 0, e to the t, 2 minus 1, 1, 1. Okay? And if you multiply all that out, you get that this is equal to a third this is 2e to the minus 2t plus e to the t is minus 2e to the minus 2t plus e to the t minus 2e to the minus 2t plus 2e to the t e to the minus 2t plus 2e to the t. So there you go. You've calculated the exponential of a matrix. Now one very useful thing and there's a question on the practice sheet which shows why this is so useful. One very useful thing of calculating the exponential of a matrix is it allows you to solve differential equations with matrices because you can check that the derivative of this, right, that just means differentiate each element by t, you can check that if you do that then the answer you get is the matrix A times the same matrix, e to the at. So this means that you can differentiate exponential matrices in exactly the same way you just differentiate normal exponential functions. Right? If this was just a number a, then this would be true. It's also true if a is a matrix as well. And this is, as I say, very useful. Right, so I think that's all the examples I'll do. I'll just 
quickly mention another one. You can also calculate the log of a matrix A in the same way. Okay. You can kind of see where it goes now, right? The log of the matrix A will be P times the log of the matrix lambda times P minus 1. And the log of the matrix lambda will be the one which has the log of each eigenvalue on the diagonal. So in this way, you can also calculate logs of matrices. So the diagonalization formula gives you the way of calculating various different functions of matrices, which is very useful.